fantastic pike I just got on the skinny hook rig. And uh, now she's going back. It's 15 kilos. Bye bye. Hi, my name is Jens. One of my favorite methods for big pike is uh, dead baiting. It can be very, very effective, but I must admit sometimes it can be a very long wait when you are going for the big ones. Um, but the last thing in the world you want to do is to miss out on the big fish when you at last get that run you, were, you have been sitting and waiting for. Uh, and especially when you're using big baits, uh, it can be quite difficult to hook the pike well. So uh, for this purpose, I have developed the skating hook rig. It's the type of release rig where you uh, get a much better uh, hook up rate, especially on the bigger baits, because the hooks can move independently uh, of the bait. And this means that uh, no matter how hard uh, the fish locks its jaws around the bait, you would be able to move the hook freely without having to pull the hooks out of the bait. So let me show you how to use this method. Here you see all the materials needed to make the skating hook release rig. You can use any type of wire, for example, coated wire or non-coated wire. I prefer a titanium wire because it lasts a lot longer, so we don't need to make rigs all the time. With titanium like this, uh, you might be lucky that your rigs will be lasting several seasons, so it's really worthwhile using that material. You need uh, swivels to connect the rig to the cross lock at the end of your line. You need good trebles like these owners. You need wire crimps uh, to the end of the rig to secure the solid ring. You need power gum for the power gum stop knot. You need casting clips for casting the bait out with a loop on the end of the tail of the bait fish. You need spro shad stinger spikes to semi-fix the rig to the bait fish. You need size one spit rings and five millimeter solid rings. And you need small elastic bands like these loom bands. You need beads uh, to uh, stop on the power gum stop knot and you need uh, something to make the loop on the bait fish and here you see it's PVA strip, that, that's what I prefer but you could also just be using a, a nylon loop or a plastic strip or something like that. So all these materials for this getting hook rig you can buy in my web shop releasefrickshop.com and you can also buy all the other materials needed for different types of release rigs. So here you see the skinny hook rig. Uh, this one is made from 36 pound 7 strand titanium, which is the best material in my eyes uh, for this rig because it lasts a lot longer than the normal wires. Uh, you start by cutting off uh, what you need. I normally use like 60 to 80 centimeters for the, for the hook length. And then I start by putting on this uh, transparent glass bead, which is going to have a diameter uh, so small that it stops against this power gum stop knot that I will be making from 14 pound power gum, typical from Drennan. Um, so uh, I start putting on this uh, bead and I put on a Spro Shad Stinger Spike here, which is the best bait spike for the purpose for a bait fish because it's the only one that really grips well with the small. Uh, barbs here at the very sharp point. And then you uh, tie the rig into this uh, five millimeter solid ring with a three or four turn blood knot. And then uh, you have the tag here uh, from the blood knot. On this you uh, uh, crimp this five millimeter solid ring with a, this is a Savage Gear wire crimp with a diameter 1.2 millimeters. And uh, in this uh, solid ring you put a size 1 split ring and a size 6 owner hook. This is a ST36 BCX, which is perfect all-round hook for this type of dead baiting. And uh, on the hook I loop with a lax knot, I loop a loom band, which is a small elastic. And on this I have a, a shad stinger spike from Spo. You see here I have a shad stinger spike also. Uh, you can actually mount them after you've made the rig because uh, these uh, spikes are open eyed so you just uh, put the spike over the wire and and push it, uh, push the eye together with a plier. And in the front solid ring I also mount a size 6 uh, owner hook with a size 1 split ring and as you can see here I have a hammer bead. This hammer bead is uh, cleaved with a scalpel, uh, so I can use it for semi-fixing the hook so, it has, uh, so it's turning the right way for uh, optimal hooking of the pike. 
And then uh, you are actually ready. It's very simple rig uh, to make. Uh, you can see exactly how to make it in my book Pike Fever that I'll show you later. So here you see the hook exposure on the skinny hook rig is much better than the normal rig where you put uh, one hook branch into the bait because here the hook is riding very high. As you see the one branch which is exposed is uh, elevated uh, by the two other branches so it's better exposed and also the fact that you just have one branch gives a much higher chance that just one point is uh, penetrating and it's easier to make one point penetrate than two points. So this is part of the reason why this rig is hooking better but also because of the moving hook effect I showed you before where the hooks can move independently of the bait so you can hook the pike well no matter uh, how hard the pike locks the bait over its jaws. Right so now I show you the difference between having one or two branches sticking out of your bait. Normally you will be sticking one branch into the bait and that means that two branches would be sticking up. On the skating hook rig the two branches rest on the top of the bait fish and one branch is pointing up. This gives a much better exposure and a deeper grip and a better penetration. I'll just explain you why. Because now if we turn the whole thing around and we uh, say that this is the jaw of the pike and you are using the normal setup with one branch in the fish and two branches sticking up, when you hook the pike in the jaw you will be having the hook sitting like this. So this means that you get a relatively shallow hook grip which is maybe just 40% of what you would have had with the skating hook rig. And you, are you have two branches you have to uh, penetrate and that means you need the double power to make them penetrate. So that's why it's an advantage to have one branch and one point sticking out of the baitfish instead of two as you would have on the normal rigging. So now I'll show you exactly how to mount the skinny hook rig on the baitfish. This is a mackerel. It's allowed uh, in many European countries to use saltwater bait in freshwater, not in Denmark. So in Denmark I would be using for example a roach or something like this. Um, first you start by uh, putting on the first uh, bait spike here. It could be anywhere where you please, uh, but I normally mount it uh, somewhere around here in the head. And then I put a slight tension on it and I mount this second bait spike and then I put a slight tension on the rig and I stick down the last bait spike here in the bait fish and then we're ready to fish as you can see here. Of course there's one thing when you mount this skinny hook rig you cannot cast it the normal way you would be casting when you put the hooks in the bait because it is actually only an elastic band that holds the rig and then the, the spikes of course. So you need to be casting with a casting clip but most dead baiters will be doing that anyway in order to make sure that the bait was not ripped off the hook during the casting and the casting acceleration. So let me show you how to uh, mount uh, the loop for casting with bait clip. Uh, normally I use a PVA strip, it dissolves in the water, it's polyvinyl alcohol and it dissolves 100% to water so that gives the best hooking because there's nothing which can interfere with the rig and the hooking. Um, you could also be using a plastic strip uh, but in this case uh, it, you must be sure that it goes around the, the wire so you don't lose the plastic in the water. I also use a small uh, plier like this one to uh, uh, tighten up the strip and a baiting needle to make a hole uh, before I put the strip in. I take the baiting needle and I push a hole in the in the bait fish below the spine like this. Then I'm ready to push the PVA strip through and out through the other side. So now you see it goes around the wire and it goes around the spine of the of the bait fish so it's sitting perfect so it can take a lot of casting acceleration. So I tighten the, the strip like this and I bite it off with the plier. And then I have a perfect loop here on where I can attach the casting clip for casting. So here you see my normal setup at the end of the line. Uh, I have a snack leader here which is 0.60 uh, to take the worst abuse from uh, stones and rocks and sharp muscles and so on. I normally use a 60 to 80 gram lead like this uh, in camouflage. 
so it matches the color of the bottom. Uh, it sits in a clip so it's easy to shift and it runs on a run rig like this so it's, there's no resistance in the take. I have a, a bead here to uh, protect the nut on the crosslock swivel. And in the top part of the crosslock swivel, I have mounted my uh, casting clip here in a bit ring. You can get them many uh, places. These casting clips, you can get them in releaserigshop.com, for example. Uh, as you can see, it's mounted so that the the hook on the casting clip is pointing away from the crosslock, and that's quite important to avoid tangle with the with the trace uh, and the hooks and the casting clip during casting. So uh, in this way, it uh, it releases better. So now you're ready to mount the loop on the baitfish tail in the casting clip, and what you do is that you turn the baitfish round, so uh, the hooks are turning down, and then you, you have the hook on the casting clip here, and th that hook is going to be placed in the PVA loop on the dorsal side, away from the hooks, like this, and then you're ready to cast, and then you, you, you've got to make sure that you make slow movements when you are taking your rod and uh, swinging it round, and when you're casting, you use a slow acceleration so you don't make the hook from the casting clip fall out. And then when the whole thing is in the midair, the casting clip will be freeing from the loop on the baitfish and the rig will be free and fold out and land perfectly in the water. So now I'm ready to cast out and I make sure that I don't make any fast movements. I slowly uh, take in some line here. so. Uh, the baitfish hang in the right distance under the rod tip and then I slowly turn backwards and with a slow and moderate acceleration I cast the bait out and in the midair now it slips and lands perfect on the water. So when you've been casting out uh, your rig with the bait you tighten up the line slowly and you just, you know, tighten up so you don't feel any real tension, but just a little tension. Then you know that the line is straight through the water, but you don't want to pull it over the uh, bottom of, of there because then the hooks could be catching debris and stuff like that that could be masked the hooking. And it also gives an inferior a penetration if it's half a buried in mud out there. So you, you make the tension on the line, slight tension on the line, and then you open the bail arm like I just did and take maybe just a, a little bit of line off and then you put the line here in the clip in the hanger. And then you're ready to fish. So now all you need to do is to turn on the electronic bite alarm uh, on the front bank stick on the buzzer. Uh, and the reason why I didn't do it while I was uh, adjusting uh, uh, the line and you know uh, putting on the hanger is that I don't want uh, too much beep 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 all the time. So I wait uh, turning on the electronic alarm until I, I have actually put the line in the clip and I'm ready. So now all we need to do is to wait and I hope for the mega pipe to uh, take that bait fish out there and get hooked perfectly on the rig. I normally uh, place the spike so the so the front hook of the rig is on the gill lid so it slides perfectly there then I put the second spike and I put a slight tension on the rig here so there's just a, just a slight tension on it like this and as you see here now the rig can move completely freely over the skin of the back row. One of the truly unique things about the skin hook rigs for pike is that when the pike locks its jaws over the bait locks it completely solid, then if you've had a normal rig where the uh, branches are stuck into the baitfish, you would need to rip the hook out of the baitfish in order to move the hook into the pike when the baitfish is locked solid in the mouth. But with this rig, even though it's locked completely solid over the baitfish, you would be able to hook the pike because the hook can move independently over the bait, no matter how firm the pike will hold the bait. So that was all about my skinny hook release rig for pike, for dead baiting. You can read all about it in my uh, big pike book here, Pike Fever. This is the English version. It's also published in Danish and Swedish and German. You can buy the books and all the materials for the skinny hook rig in my web shop, which is called releaserigshop.com.
take a look at this massive fish. Just got on a skating hook rig on a medium-sized bait fish, and now she's going back in 